Amen. Thank you, Grace. I like that. A blessing to at least one person. Low bar. I like that. I just got to encourage one of y'all tonight. I think, hopefully, Lord willing, we can do that. Um, just so you know, just a little calendar for you guys. We're jumping right into it. We've been waiting for this. We're going to be back and just to jump into a series into God's Word. Two weeks from now, we are going to have a young adults community night. Does that sound nice? A hang, as we call it, over at the East Lawn. So uh, excited for that as well. Um, man, how was your Christmas? You guys have a good holiday? Good New Year? The answer is always like, it was good, but different. You know, like everyone's like, oh, I mean, it, it, it was good, you know. It was just, you know, super different. You know, okay, I, yeah, I, I feel you. Um, so so we're back. Uh, anyone, have, you guys have time off, right? You guys, anyone who's working, get some time off. You know, students, you got some time off. It's good to have that time off. You got to get that, just got to get that break and just kind of reset Um, I got to tell you about the best part of my holidays, best part of my break. Um, I, I could say, you know, it was time with my wife, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, I could say, you know, it was golfing with some boys. Um, I could say it was my cool new watch I got for Christmas, but it wasn't. That's not my, that's not the best part of my break. The best part of my break, um, was on December 11th, which kind of before a break technically, but last time I saw you, it was on December 11th when my son accepted Jesus Christ as a Savior. Amen. Come on. This boy is four years old. Now, here's the deal. Some of you, maybe you're like me. I'm just going to be honest. Maybe you're like me. And um, I'm, I've been kind of like trying to push it off. Like, you know, it's kind of come up a couple times and, um, and he's asked about it. And, and we've been reading this book, uh, uh, like, you know, often, very frequently called, it's the gospel book. And it has this, it goes through all the, the parts of the gospel and the message of the gospel. And, and he started like finishing it, like lines for me. And like, he started like, he can't read, but he's like saying them, like, we'll get to a page and he'll like say what it is. And I'm like, okay, like you're getting this and like trying to have a conversation about it. And so right before, um, right before Christmas, he's at preschool and, you know, his preschool teacher, legend, Mrs. Gilbreth here, here at the Grove. And she's, um, I've referenced her before actually. And, and she says, you know, hey, you know, the, the, the greatest gift that you could give to God for Christmas is your heart. Come on. Come on. And when you say heart, you guys, like we're talking, we're talking depth here. We're talking soul words right here. We're talking, you know, your heart is every part of who you are, right? Like your whole essence. Like that's what the word means in the Bible, in scripture, in Hebrew. That's what she's saying. And so he's th- this and you could tell. So he gets home and he's got this big smile on his face and he looks at Emily, my wife, and he says, um, mom, he's smiling, this big smile. He's like, I'm ready to give Jesus my heart. I'm like, oh my gosh. So she texts me this. I'm like in a meeting. I'm like trying not to cry. I'm like, oh my God, okay, I'm going to come home right now. And, um, and so I come home and re- like, it's filled with, like, I'm like, ah, oh, but is he ready? Is this real? Like he's four, but he's four. Like, I think he gets the gospel like way more than a lot of other people, a lot of adults. Um, and so, and so we are like, okay, let's go through this. Like, Lord, like, Hey, like if he understands, like even science talks about like the cognitive mind and being able to understand things. Like if you're three, you can, like he's four. So let's do this. So I set up my phone, actually the entire conversation. And, um, and so I ask him, like we start off and I say, okay, Jordan, like, why are we here? What, what are you, what are you thinking? What do you want to do? And he's like, I want to give my heart to God. And I'm like, all right, let's go. So we start going through, I get the book. I'm like, let's go through this book. Let's have this conversation. And, um, and so I'm going through it. And again, he's finishing it, the punishment for sin. And he's like, is death. He kind of said it kind of excitedly. So I was like, about that? <laughs> like, okay, hold on. Like, whoa. And then he's like, and God is holy. I was like, okay. He's like, you know, cutting me off. And God can never sin. You know, <laughs> we're like in the middle of the gospel. This is just a great like humor moment. He pauses and his sister, right? Family, parenthood, you know, you got other kids here at this moment. You want this moment to be precious? Like go lock Nora upstairs somewhere, but you don't like that doesn't happen. So she's like jumping off the table. Like as we're having this serious gospel conversation with my son and he pauses, he looks at Nora and says, Nora's not ready for this. <laughs> so then I'm like, yeah, you're right. And Jesus, and he's like died on the cross, and we're just like back in it. Some believed, and he goes, and some people didn't. Some people didn't. 
as he gets it. And listen, I have my concerns, right? I have my, my cynicism, but the Lord knows his heart. Like he knows the heart of my son, Jordan. And here's the deal. We, we prayed together. I looked at him. I asked him questions. Guys, he's saved. He, he believes in Jesus. And I do believe strongly that it's up to me, primarily as his parent, as his father, to disciple him. And as I look even in my own life and the life, I think that's maybe where, for a lot of us, a, le- a lesson for you p- potentially future parents to remember that I think sometimes the neglect of discipleship is most often seen in parenthood with children. And that is something for me to also uh, uh, remind myself of. Uh, my son is now part of God's family. Amen? Well, that's pretty sweet. God is with uh, Jordan, my son. He is with and Jordan doesn't have to worry. He doesn't have to fear or be alone anymore. Jesus, the word, is with him. Now, we're going to go through the series in John. And as a church, our theme is God with us, right? We're going through and we're landing in the book of Exodus in the Old Testament. And the gospel of John is also all about this idea that God is with us. If any book, it's probably the the one book that the New Testament kind of parallels in, in, in many, many ways. Because God, Jesus, is the word in the flesh. Literally, the definition of one of the names of Jesus, Emmanuel, is God with us, right? So do you see this significance here? I want you guys to see this with me, that Jesus is God in the flesh, right? Like he's the human version, but he's also still fully God. The gospel of John, listen, is not about a message that offers hope, about the message that is the only hope, amen? Live in a world that likes to offer versions of hope, uh, disguised and, and I, want, I want you to kind of see this. Now, here's the thing. One of the things when I think we, when we think about um, Jesus and our relationship with God and, and being a Christian and, and praying and talking to God and asking, sometimes, especially um, maybe in this season, I think we're tempted to ask God for illumination, maybe insight for our life, right? Do you, do you ever do this? Maybe, hey, uh, God, would you just kind of illuminate some truth for me? Would you help give me the insight of what job I should choose? But we don't ask for intervent, intervention. I don't know if, um, if you know this, but that's not how God works. Um, I recently did this, this study on prayer, and it was really interesting to kind of see these different types of prayer. There's this, um, there's this scholar healer who kind of mapped out these six different sort of like categories of prayer and how it kind of builds off in, each, uh, off in each other. And then they get to prophetic prayer, which is biblical prayer. But the one right before that is mystic prayer. And that was the difference. The difference was us just kind of getting into this place. It's not a Christian biblical prayer. It's right before that, that type. It's we just want illumination. God, just give me insight. I don't, I don't want intervention in my life because that would actually be really inconvenient. Like I kind of want to do my life myself. So in light of that, I want you to kind of think about that. It might help you identify even in your relationship. Man, okay, am I there? Are you able to intervene in your life for transformation? Are you ready to intervene in your life for transformation? Have you given him permission to be the only hope in your life? Amen? And so that brings us to John chapter 1, verse 1. And so let's go through this again. Follow with me, and we'll pause at some different moments. Um, Here we go. In in the beginning was the Word. Okay, the Word. We got, what, what is the Word? Well, we got the Word is the Word right here in front of me, Scripture, but also Jesus, because it says, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. How's that for a tongue twister? Now, I remember being in college, like, right, I went to college to study uh, biblical studies and theology, and I remember, like, my mind being blown, because I had never really thought about that before, that Jesus has always and forever existed in eternity past. Maybe you know that already. Maybe you don't. Maybe you've never thought about it before. Even if you know it, it's a thing to celebrate. It's a thing to be excited about, to be reminded of and be like, that is insane. That Jesus has always been around. Of course, it's the Trinity. It's the, it's the triune God, right? That's one God, three persons. But that's still so weird, right? Can we just pause about it? Like, that's so wild and kind of mind-blowing and beautiful and insane that Jesus has always and forever existed. It should encourage us. <clears throat> this should be helpful for us to, to 
kind of process through this. It should give us comfort. It should give us peace. All things were made through him. And it was not anything that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness doesn't win. Okay, it doesn't overcome it. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. And he came as a witness to bear witness about this light. That was his job. That was his mission that all might believe through him. He was not the light to bear witness about also our role. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world um, was made through him, yet the world did not know him. So wild, right? Maybe some of us have studied this. Maybe, us, maybe some of us have listened to an incredible sermon on this passage. But come on, how wild is it that the very creator of the world came to the world, but the world did not know him? Isn't that so wild? That we walk on this world every single day past so many people who do not recognize their own creator of why they're here and how they're here on the earth that they literally walk on. How wild is that? Every single day. The world did not know him. And he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, there it is, that's it. That's my son. And he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Through adoption. Come on. Who were born, not of of the will of of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh. And here it is. And dwelt among us. Come, came to be with us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only son for the father, full of grace and truth. And John bore witness about him and cried out, this was he of whom I, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me, right? He has always existed in eternity past. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace, undeserved merit. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known, amen? This is the word of the Lord. Now, one thing I do want to share real quick is that even this first verse, um, man, there's commentaries written. My, one of my professors was reading a, writing a commentary on the Gospel of John when I was a student, and he was only on the first verse, and he had 300 pages. We're not going to do a sermon tonight. I just want you to know that there's a lot to say, and so I'm going to do my best, okay? So, my main... My main sort of focus in this passage tonight, because obviously it's 18 verses, it's so much, is I truly, 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 truly want you to know that here it is. Jesus is with you. That's a, that's a, that's kind of a really big deal. That's kind of, that's kind of insane, right? Like he's with you. Like, let's think about it. Okay. Let's set it up. Let's give the word picture. Okay. COVID 2020 isolation. People feeling alone, people feeling like they don't have hope, people feeling like they don't have anyone, right? People feeling like, why am I here? What is life? I I don't have anyone who cares about me, who can relate to me. That's insane, right? The God of the universe who created us, who has always forever and eternity past existed, is with us. He came to dwell among us, amen? Amen. Like, do you see this, right? Like, this should be just absolute. I don't even have words to describe how insanely powerful and beautiful and significant this is for your life. He is with us. He is what lives with you. He is the life. He is the light. He is the truth. This is where we get our confidence, our joy, our fulfillment. This is what casts a vision for your life. I'm, I have this insanely hard thing in front of me. I have, but Jesus is with me. I don't know where I'm going or what's next in my life. I don't know how to choose a major. I don't know how to choose a career. I hate my job. My family is a mess. Whatever it is, but Jesus is with you. Do you remember? Come on. Like this, this is like, here, I don't want, as we look at 2020, as I've kind of meditated 
for a while on this next season, the, this next year, right? Like, okay, we're going to come back in January. What are we going to do? We were in the book of Luke. Like, what are we going to study? What are we going to be about? What is young adults ministry going to be known as? What's the identity? And I don't want any BS, y'all. Like, this is what we need. Raw, raw, deep truth for the most important part of who you are in your essence. This is my starting point, the foundation. Everything that is anything is this, the word, the truth of God. Amen. This is what we need. And, and you might feel like some Christians, I don't know if you feel like this. I, I've had some interesting conversations. I get it. I've, I'm really, um, I'm really like, I'm burdened by the church, the voice of Christians in the world today. And, and you might feel like some Christians are talking to you like things that are like, like, a, like maybe you're looking for a culture series and you're like, oh, I just want some Christian or some church to just start talking about what's actually happening in the world and some of these tough topics. And, and, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm, the reality is I'm going to make the word the main thing. I just want you to know that as your young adults pastor. Like I'm going to make scripture the main thing. So I'll discuss, I love having conversations. I'll discuss your questions about any sort of relevant culture moment. I want you to know that. I can talk politics. I can talk race, medicine. I, I will have those conversations. Just know that Christ is all over them. For me, if we talk and when we talk, he'll be constantly brought up. He'll be saturated over every nuance and detail. There is no separation of Jesus from any topic. You hear me? And so I want, I hope that, that you share with me in that. I will never shy away. I will never shy away from a hard conversation. And listen, I'm not saying that those topics won't come up even in a message here, but I have prayed and I have discussed and I've begged the Lord to guide me for what our Thursday nights will be about. And the answer is his word, the gospel of John for now. Is that cool? That's where we're at. And so the more, the more you know his truth, the more you know the lies. You hear me? Um, the, the more you're in the light, the more you flee the darkness. Come on, it's quiet. Are we with me? Are we fall asleep. When you make the main thing, the main lesser things fall into place. Do you hear that? I'm not saying they're not important. Race, mess, I, I care about them. I'm having them. I'm talking about this time. We need more of the truth and more of the word in our lives to guide those conversations. Amen? So three points tonight. The three points are this. Um, point number one, you have complete confidence in Christ. Point number two, the world completely rejects Christ. And point number three, only Christ completely transforms. I'm going to say them again. Number one, you have complete confidence in Christ, complete and entire confidence in Christ. Point number two, the world completely rejects Christ. If you, if you don't believe me, um, that, that's going to be a good one for us to go through. And then the third point is only Christ completely transforms. Point number one, you have, you have complete confidence in Christ. Um, man, Jesus, he's not one savior. He's not just one savior among the world's many saviors, right? He's not one good man among many men. He's the only savior. He's the only good man. All the other, therefore, they're not good. <laughs> okay, Here, here's some good reminders for us. If anything, for the Christian, if, you've, if you have been in the church, if you have studied your word, um, many of these things might be reminders. Uh, if anything, ask the Lord, hey, what do I need to be reminded of? What do you need to transform in my heart? Um, and, and come alongside and be encouraged and encourage others. But here's the deal. Let's, let's remind ourselves of some helpful truths. Christ and the Father, the same essence, the same being. There never was a time that Christ didn't exist. I think that's beautiful. I think that's helpful for us. Look, no one, no one casually becomes a Christian, or at least they shouldn't, right? Like, when you become a Christian, you are literally saying to all of the world and saying to God that you are entirely broken and depraved, and you are in need of a rescuer, and without Jesus' death and, res and resurrection, like, you're going to hell forever. So as I, I really don't think that that's something that we should, right, casually go into. It, it, our Western culture, though, Goodness, they have made it impossible to see a world where God exists and is real and is loving and is personal and did something for them that they didn't deserve, right? Like, no, God doesn't do that. That's not the kind of beat us as to share that truth. 
to be the difference, the, the part holy, be holy as I am, as I am holy. But isn't it possible, right? Like some of the questions maybe we should be asking and posing to our friends of the world who do not believe, is it possible he did? Is it possible that if God is real, he does actually love you? Is that possible? And listen, the darkness and sin, is it possible? This darkness and sin in the world is from humanity. It's from people, not God. And did something for you. And God did something for you that you didn't deserve, right? Like, man, is that possible? We have complete confidence in Christ, but we often mistakenly put complete confidence in the world. Or we often mistakenly put complete confidence in ourselves. Do you relate? It's a good reminder. It's a good reminder. It's a point that I think we need to pause on and even maybe meditate on and ask ourselves, do I put complete, utter confidence in Christ? No, sometimes it's ourselves. It is. And I'll be honest. I, I, I struggle with that. Um, you know, I, have, I can have the mentality, I'll figure it out. I'll push through. I don't need that. Hey, we need the church. Amen. I'm reading a book with some guys. It's called Spiritual Multiplication in a Real World. Fascinating. The subtitle is this. Why some are effective disciple makers when others fail. And I'm like fascinated by this idea of making disciples and being a faithful follower of Jesus who shares the and raises up people to follow him faithfully to become Christ-like. And, and that is the common denominator of those who are effective disciple makers versus those who fail. The one thing that sets the successful disciple makers apart is team. A team. Isn't that interesting? And it says the thing that makes them ineffective the most and the quickest is isolation. Isn't that interesting? And so, I, I mean, obviously, that team, of course, should be the church, amen? And even this right here, look at this. Like, we need to be reminded that we have complete confidence in Christ. And isn't it, isn't it when we find ourselves alone and in our thoughts that we begin to be tempted otherwise? that we begin to put our confidence maybe in the world or in ourselves. We begin to maybe doubt our confidence in Christ. Are we relating? Anyone? Yeah, we're there. We're kind of there. Okay. And so we need to be, we need the church. We need the church. We need to be reminded of this. We need to have other people look us in the eye and say, wherever your mindset is of everything that you just said, I just want you to know it's a lie. That's not true about you, and that's not true about God. We all struggle, right? I hope that you're having safe conversations. You're able to express where you're at with your friends, with with family and people that you trust. I hope that you have those, and I hope that you have friends that look you in the eye and speak truth into your life, amen? And that is what we need. We need to be reminded that we have complete confidence in Christ because when we begin to become insecure and lose our confidence, we need the church, right? The family ought at each other and say, I'm going to speak truth in your life. That's not true. That is not true. You have complete confidence in Christ. We need to be reminded of truth. Point number two, the world completely rejects Christ. I think we know this. I think we know this. Look, like people, people love the darkness. They do. You see it, right? It's, it's obvious. You see it on Instagram, um, you, you see it in, um, hmm, you see it on January 6th, you see darkness, you see a lot of darkness in the world. I don't think I need to convince you that people love the darkness. They love the darkness rather than light. Here, here's the deal. Because the decisions, their deeds are evil. That's John three nineteen. Like is evil benefits me. You understand? If my behavior is evil, darkness benefits me. Man, I need some like really strong glue for these notes. Um, here, here's what I want to challenge you and don't be gullible. The world isn't looking for heaven to send a savior. They're not. The world isn't looking out for you in your best interests. Think about it. The world is not on your team. They are not your allies. Christ in scripture has set them up as The enemy, the enemy to still share truth with and love, but they are not on your team. They are not your allies. They are not setting you up for this. Like if a savior were coming on their terms, 
in, in the, in the form and mold of the world? Sure. Maybe. And I wonder maybe if we are tempted in that as well, right? We want our, our version of Jesus. That is, that is who we follow. Here's another reason why the world completely rejects Christ. We see it in unbelief. We see the idea of those who do not believe and the idea of unbelief. And we see how it has been justified away in many sophisticated. We have, you know, these different philosophies. We have these different approaches to to life and to human flourishing. And you see, you know, really smart people who don't believe in God and how they come to grips with that. We, We see Western civilization sophisticate God out of their worldview. Interesting. Because Jesus, remember, he's always, he's always lived. He was a part of even creating walk. But what about Jesus on judgment day? What about then? What will they think? I think we need to think about some of these things to ask God to burden our heart for the nations, for the world, for those who don't believe. I, I think we need to be like consumed. Um, and, and this is for me too. Like I ask the Lord, God, burden my heart for people who don't believe. Because... Because if they don't believe and they have confidence in their unbelief, man, they're even farther away from considering Christ's death and resurrection for their life, for their salvation. And so, Lord, I pray for their heart. Like, I pray that you would soften their heart, that you would help us have a burden for that. The other thing that the world doesn't like, (laughs) the world doesn't like darkness being named for what it is. Have you ever had a conversation with a friend Mikey just did, I guess. Um, if you're in a conversation with a friend and you're trying to bring up, maybe, maybe, I don't know about that. I don't know about that thing, right? And you're trying to have a conversation with this person who's not a Christian. You're trying to bring it up. And, uh, and you want to say, I think that's maybe not true. Or I think that's maybe a lie. Or maybe I think that's sin. And, 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 and people, the world, people who are not following Jesus and are living in the world, that don't like darkness being named for what it is. So, we get to this to this last part of the point, right? The world completely rejects Christ. Is this true? Humanity, listen, is is doomed, right? And so if this is true, guess what needs to happen? It must be reborn. Amen. And we see this in, of course, the gospel of John. We see the idea of being later on. And so we'll, let, we'll end it. the third point is this. Christ completely transforms. So in light of just thinking about my son and thinking about him coming to faith and making this decision, um, it's, it's been really interesting on my mind to be thinking about salvation and thinking about sanctification because it is an interesting thing. Like uh, salvation is instantaneous, right? So there's instantaneous salvation where we believe and we profess that Christ is Lord. We confess our sin and need to be rescued or put our trust and our faith and, and believe with all that we are that, hey, Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. And we choose, we make a decision upon repentance to choose to believe that, that he is our savior. But sanctification, it's progressive, right? It, it goes over time where God, right? He, he continues to like mold us and, and sanctify us, right? Like purify us and make us holy. So it's this, it's this interesting sort of tension where there's instantaneous salvation, but there's progressive sanctification, right? Where it continues to move and grow us. And so it's, it's the third point. Only Christ completely transforms. Amen. We might have little bits of transformation in our life. Um, I don't know about you, but it's like, you know, it's January. So everyone's trying to get back in the gym, back in shape. You're right. I want some transformation around this, you know, midriff area, right? Some LBs. I've, what have you lost from 2020? What did you gain? I gained some LBs. Let's go. Okay. What, where, where are we going? 2021. Let's renew this year. You see people doing the 30 day Arbon. What is it? Shake life. What is it? Who's doing that? Yeah. You guys are like all young. You're fine. Okay. But I'm in my 30s. Like I'm in a small group. Everyone has kids. Like it is like, it's the talk with the ladies and it has become the talk with the guys. Like it is diet. And like, you know, you got Daniel Bishop leading our church and he's like, all right, let's lose weight. He's on a thing. He's doing, everyone's. So we, we might, we might experience some physical transformation. Right. And of course it's helpful. But at the end of the day, like that, that, that is something for us to think about. Right. Because it's every single day. Sometimes, sometimes we, you know, we'll look in the mirror. Oh, what the heck? on the scale. But at the end of the day, complete transformation only comes from Christ. 
Talking about your heart, talking about your soul, talking about your mind. I am talking about your body, but I'm talking about complete transformation only comes from Christ. Amen. We get instantaneous salvation and, of course, progressive sanctification. I love this quote. Uh, It says, transformation is not an inspired human work. It is a divine work through and through. It only can come from God, period. Amen. Amen. And, and here's the deal. Here's what, you know, transformation really looks like on the most practical level. Uh, us asking the Lord, uh, after we've, of course, professed faith in him as our Lord, become a Christian, we've got to ask the Lord to transform us. Now, I want to have a quick little heart-to-heart moment. If, if we're believers, right, and, and we're like, Lord, I want to grow, right, I want to you know, you're even thinking like New Year's resolutions and you're like, man, I want to transform. God, would you just, would you just, um, and I'm like trying to figure out how I'm going to say this to you because I don't want to sound, I don't want this to come across. But at the end of the day, like if you have months and months and years and years where you're just, you're not reading your Bible like ever, you know, you go to church. Yes, you're going to listen to a sermon. But scripture is the, is Every sort of transformation at all is going to come from here. So if you're never in the word, how can you transform? This is what transforms you. It is. I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. Do you hear me? Read your Bible. You understand? Now, here's the deal. I've been, over the last 10 years of my life, decade, I've been in ministry. I've been inconsistent. I've been all over the place. I've had some, you know, reading plans go well or try out different things. At the end of the day, um, I, I don't necessarily care what it is. I don't think God cares what it is or how you read his word. Do it in a way where you just, you ask the Lord. You ask the Lord to, to teach you for intervention in your life. And if there's things that you don't understand in God's word, buy a study Bible, come to me. Go talk to someone who can say, I'm going to read the Bible with you. I'm going to make sure you know how to study the Bible. Email me. All I want you to do, I just want you to read his word. Okay, this was uh, months ago. Bishop, our lead pastor, I was like, what do you do for your quiet time? I just want to know. He's like, I, I just, I read a few chapters a day. I, I write down a verse and then I write out a prayer or, or like a, a thought or a prayer to him. I was like, I love that. It's like one of those is a proverb a day. I was like, I love that. And so I've just, I've just been doing that. I love it. I love it. And I've been sharing it with people because I think people aren't talking about how they read the Bible and study the Bible. It's like, how do we not talk about that? Like, I can give a sermon to you, but we're not talking about, like, we should all be just reading his word together. So I've just been doing it since July. Like, I just started in Genesis. And I'm, I'm kidding you not. Like, I, I've even told some of my D group guys this. Like, I was in Leviticus. And I was like, it's the strangest thing. But God is ministering to my heart through Leviticus. Like I told them, asked them, like I did. It was wild. And I just, cause I'm just asking the Lord, like, I don't know. Like, I just don't know. Like life is crazy. Like look at 2020, right? Like God, just teach me, grow me. Please, I beg you, do it. Uh, that's all I do. I want you to know. Cause some people are kind of, I think, confused at what a quiet time looks like. You're not going to transform. You're not going to grow if you're not in his word. So I just read, I just read two chapters a day. I read a chapter and here's what I do. This is what helps me stay engaged. Otherwise, it will be dry. It will be hard for you to stay engaged with his word. It's nothing special. But I read the chapter and I look for the verse that if it's not there in the chapter, the rest of the chapter doesn't make sense. And there might be two or three of that. Like someone asked me, he was like, well, what if there's three really important verses? I was like, it's not the point. <laughs> like, come on, don't be that guy. Just look for a verse that's like, oh, most imp- like, what's the most important one, right? And if it's not there, and what is- I read the pa- after I read the chapter, it forces me to go back through and just keep looking and at what is the most, and it keeps me engaged in the word. And I write it out. And then I pray through that verse. I've just prayed through scripture. It's his word. I think he, that's good. He likes that. There's a book on that. It's literally pray through the Bible. You should read it. It's really good. Um, and then I do a proverb. That's all I do. And it's so, it's, it's, a, it's great. I don't want to hype it up too much, but it's the Bible and his words. So it's kind of awesome. So just ask him though, because if we approach it from a place where we are not wanting transformation, if we approach, approach his word from a place where we do not actually want God to intervene, it will be, it will be dead to you. It will just be another book. Amen. 
And so that's my last sort of plea and charge tonight to start 2021. I ask myself these questions when I prep these sermons. I say, what's the most important thing I could tell these guys? What's the most important thing that I could encourage you guys in? And I think it's to keep the main thing the main thing. To, to, to know the truth of his scripture, to, to be in his word. That's why we're studying the gospel of John and to end this sermon, Christ, completely trans. Please read your Bible. It will grow you. It will transform you. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for a time where we can get in your word, your scripture. God, you are the word. You've always been in existence and so we worship you out of that truth and knowing that truth and, and knowing who you are and your character that you've always had this rescue plan. We're rescued because of your son, Jesus. God, we have so much to worship you for. And so Lord, I pray um, on this evening, January 14th, 2021, God, I just pray for the, that, that this, would, this was a blessing, Lord, and that we, um, that we can be encouraged that we can have complete confidence in you. We know the world completely rejects you, but Lord, only your son Jesus completely transforms. Pray we worship you now. We pray these things in your name. And everyone said?